Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invites you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash with Alan Reed as the squad. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. Now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Me, sometimes I wonder if you kind of know how big is this beautiful country, America, and how is it compared to Italy? <laughs> Mama Mia, they got a one big state here, Texas. <laughs> is it take up so much room with the rest of the country as it got to squeeze it together or it would all fall into the ocean? <laughs> I guess the reason I'm writing you about it, Texas is because I've been thinking about Pasquale's Adora Rosa. Texas is the biggest state in the Union and Rosa is the biggest girl in the Union. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to think if these are two was the only ones left in America, Rosa would have pushed Texas into the ocean. <laughs> Mamma mia, lately, my countryman Pasquale, he's bothered me so much about the Rosa, I'm going to go almost crazy. So last night, I'm going to took her to the movies and what's happened. I bought her two seats, we went in, Rosa sat down, and I'm going to have a stand all the night. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to better reserve half of the balcony. But anyway, I'm a taller Pasquale about this, and again, he's a started to insult me. He's a holler and a holler until he's a kept me late for my high school class. So that I'm a left him there and a run away to my school teacher, Miss Spalding, who I'm going to ask her advice of what I should do. All right, class, quiet, please, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Well, he's absent tonight. Mr. Harwood? Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz? Absent. Thank you, fellow boobers. To know Schultz is to adore a fool. <laughs> All right, Mr. Fool. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Schultz. Now, let's get on with our lesson. I'm, I'm here, Miss Spalding. You're late, Mr. Basco. Please sit down. Now, class, tonight in our grammar lesson, we are studying clauses. And who will volunteer to give us a sentence containing a clause? Mr. Harwitz? Miss Spaulding, every time you ask for a volunteer, right away you call on me. Fortunately, today I know the answer. Good. You may give us a sentence containing a clause. John chased the cat. And where's the clause? On the cat's feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Mr. Harwitz, you should know by this time what a clause is. Well, I do know, Miss Spaulding, believe me. But when you call on me, I get nervous and I forget. So don't call on me, and I'll guarantee I'll know the answer. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> well, all right, Mr. Schultz. Suppose you tell us what a clause is. Certainly. A clause is a little thing in a big sentence. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, now, inside a big sentence, there could be a little sentence which has got its own nouns, adverbs, verbs, adjectives. Now, this little sentence has got everything the big sentence has got, only it ain't got the location, so it can't start up by itself in business. Miss <laughs> uh, Spalding, I, I know you like to save me only for emergencies, but if you wish, I will give the correct answer now. There he goes, the round brain and the square head. <laughs> Just ignore him. Mr. Olson, yes, you may give us a sentence with a clause. Yeah, huh. Jan and Jack, because they needed money, opened up a general store in Poughkeepsie. Good. Now, Mr. Basco, in that sentence, where is the clause? In a Poughkeepsie. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Mr. Basco, you've been staring out of the window ever since class started. What are you thinking about? What a Pasquale. He's a nagging me so much lately, I'm start to feel very bad. Mm-hmm. Luigi, if we told you once, we told you a million times. You should leave Pasquale and go out on your own. Your whole that's right, by ye, Minnie. That, that Pasquale will always be just a big yerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but friends, is a hard thing to do. What do you think of Miss Spalding? Well, Mr. Basco, have you ever thought of using psychology on Mr. Pasquale? Oh, no, Miss Spalding. I would have never hit him with anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Look, psychology, that's applying a method which would appeal to his mind. Impossible. Pasquale ain't got it, no mind. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. You know, Mr. Basco, I've noticed that you're always very meek in Mr. Pasquale's presence. And when he nags you or insults you, you say very little. So perhaps if you assume just the opposite attitude, his attitude might undergo a complete change, too. What do you mean, Miss Spalding? Luigi, it's simple. You got to stand up to him. Oh, that's right, Luigi. Uh, tell him you will leave him, and I'll bet you he stops pestering you. That's a wonderful idea, Luigi. Now, next time Pasquale opens up his mouth, you just fold your arms and say, Pasquale, one more word out of you, and I am getting out of here. Yeah, but do you think it's going to work? Well, why don't you try it, Mr. Basco? Nothing else has succeeded. Luigi, it's bound to work. You see, you produce a psychogenic reaction in Pasquale, which releases infantile fears and aggressions, causing his defense mechanism to drop and his maintenance of composure and assurance to be eliminated. Why, yeah, that's oh, that was so wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, yes, Schultz, that's so wonderful. What does it mean? <laughs> Luigi, it was tough enough memorizing it. I gotta know what it means, too. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hi, Pasquale. Hi, Pasquale. Yeah. What's the matter, my little banana nose? You look like you carry around a potato chips on your shoulder. <laughs> Pasquale, you're looking on a different than Luigi. Mm, you know, look different to me. Still got the same old cabbage puss. <laughs> <laughs> little pumpkin seeds of her eyes. And a little... Yeah, but Pasquale, I'm talking about my psychology. I'm independent. Well, well. I suppose you've got an important date with your rich friend, the Rockefeller. You gonna borrow a cup of oil, maybe? Pasquale, I'm warning you, is it gonna be the last straw? So what if it's the last straw? Drink it from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what are you so independent about? If you leave me, where are you gonna sleep? How are you gonna eat? You gonna get a job, could it be? Could it be? I said that at first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look on the jobs. In the post office, are you impossible. Is a civil service a job? You gotta be a veteran of the Civil War for that. <laughs> well, all right, then, then I'm a, could be a barber. That's impossible, too. You ain't got no high school diploma, so you can't get into the barbers of college. Then I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna wash your floors, or clean the windows, sell the fruit, or anything, anything. Ain't gonna help you one a bit, Mr. Jabba. First of all, I read in the papers today that every empty job in America is a taken. Huh? Taken? That's all right. They got a five people for every two jobs. Which means there's a two and a half of people looking for one job. That's the sadistics. <laughs> you mean a, you mean a two and a half of people is looking for one job? That's all right. The two big fellas and one midget. <laughs> now go ahead and look me in the face and tell me you're going to take away a job from a midget. Well, Pasquale is a bigger country. There must be something that I can do. Sure. With your brains and your training, which you ain't got, only thing you can do is buy a little monkey, a tin cup, and an organ. Now, Pasquale, Make don't it that way like you're going to grind out a living. Yeah. <laughs> Pasquale, one no more word out of you, and I'm a living. What? Are you leaving? That's right. Sir. All right. Get out of here. What? You mean that? Sir? You hired me. Go to ribbons to bat a radish, or whatever they say. <laughs> Get out of here, and remember, don't ever open this door in the dark into my face again. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, uh, Pasquale, ain't you sorry for what you said? That's a fine way to talk to me. Fellow what's brought you from the older country. Fellow who 
Oh, what's the use? It's only proof of what they say. A snake in the grass is worth a two in the bush. <laughs> go, go, go. I don't want to look on you. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 Pasquale, don't you know nothing about the psychology? I'm going to know nothing about nothing. But I know this. I want you out by tonight, and I don't care if you travel, find a job, and even get a rich. You don't think? No. And if you pass me on the street, don't even bother to say hello, because we're going to be living in a different city. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd like to suggest an easy, inexpensive way to make your daily work more enjoyable. Keep some Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. It's a treat you can enjoy almost any time, even when you're working at a fast pace. You'll find the lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor refreshing. It cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and the good, smooth chewing gives you a feeling of satisfaction while you work. It helps break the monotony and makes the job seem a bit easier. Get a few packages of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum when you go out tomorrow morning. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint while you work. You will feel better and work better. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. I'm so mamma mia. Is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. The psychology is no work, and now I'm really sick. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live here. Where I'm, I'm I don't know. First time I thought I'm going to take my life for savings and travel away from Chicago. But then I'm going to thought, uh, how far could the subway take me? <laughs> anyway, now I'm sitting in my store, wondering what I should do when suddenly my door is open up and the shorts is a command. Luigi, my fellow boob. Oh, hello, hello sir. No, Luigi, what's the matter? Him with tears in your eyes. No, you was crying. No, please, Luigi, don't cry. I couldn't stood it. You look like an Italian popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> my shorts, Pasquale is a tromiata. The psychology is a no work. What? That's right, He's a said that two snakes is a worse than a lettuce in the grass. So he just said, I'm sure I never say hello to him in a different city because he's going to have a darker face. <laughs> him and Luigi are you for shimmers. <laughs> but it's only our fault, Luigi. We gave you the wrong advice. No, 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 sure. So you tried. But now, now I'm going to go somewhere else. But where? Ach, smile, Luigi. You're coming to live with me. Huh? Yeah. With you? Me and my happy little family. There's me, my wife Frieda, the three children, Uncle Hugo, Aunt Matilda, her nephew Wolfgang, his sister Anna, cousin Jake, Grandpa Max, and the rest of the family. <laughs> Sure, so you got enough a place for me? No, sure, Luigi. We just moved to a new apartment. Oh, no apartment? How many rooms do you got? Two. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, stop, Luigi. I know just what you're thinking. What do we do with so much room? <laughs> well, we invite in some friends to live with us. So smile. No, no, sure. So you don't got enough room. Is there no place for me to sleep? Ach, stop, smile. We got it all figured out. Me and my wife and the three children, we sleep in the big bed. Uncle Hugo and his wife, they got the cut. Cousin Wolfgang has got the Morris chair. Aunt Matilda sleeps on the ironing board. And Grandpa Max on the television set. <laughs> on the television set? Yeah, and believe me, he's the best thing on television today. <laughs> Well, there's no sound possible. Where is a finer place to sleep on a television set? Oh, there's plenty of room. Between Channel 9 and Channel 11, they got nothing. <laughs> you, 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 you should have seen him last Sunday. You know, he overslept. The tubes got hot. He was jumping around, and all night long it was hop along, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Luigi. Laugh. Be happy. Never worry. The only difference between me and the warrior is we both got nothing, but the other fellows got wrinkles. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, sure, you're a wonderful person. But it's a time I'm sure I learned to figure out the things for myself. But what can you do, Luigi? Well, uh, I'm going out and find myself a job. 
Aha, that's a good idea. If you hang around here with Pasquale, you're going to wind up with a skinny future and a fat wife. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do to help you, Luigi, is send you to an employment agency. Employment agency? That's right. They're going to help you find a job, any kind of job. Yeah, but you think they're going to find the one for me, should I'm positive. Now I write down the address, and you go there. Hmm? All right. And smile, Luigi. Show the teeth. <laughs> like that. That's right. Be like me. Always happy. Always laughing. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Properly. Hmm. You don't tell us what previous jobs you've held. Well, uh, well, I miss employment, the lady. Since I'm in this country, I'm always a worker for myself. I see. And uh, how much did you earn? That's uh, the trouble. I was uh, my own boss, but I never could afford to pay myself for what I'm uh, earned. <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Basco, as regards wages, how much money do you expect? It depends. How much money you got? <laughs> you don't understand. We don't pay you the money. We just give you the job. What the kind of a job is this? Or what am I going to get paid? Uh, Mr. Basco, your employer pays you. All we get is your first week's salary. You get my first week's salary? Yes. Why? You do my first week's work? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. That's a funny thing. Is it like being married without a wife? <laughs> No, it's only our fee, and we'll straighten it out. The important thing is to find you a job. Uh, do you know office work? Well, uh, oh, I'm a think I'm a good work in an office. Well, you have to have more than a desire. Oh. Some typing, bookkeeping. Uh, how's your shorthand? How's my shorthand? Yes. <laughs> Please, lady, this sleeve is a little longer than the other one, but both of my hands are the same size. <laughs> I guess office work is look, out. Look, look, Miss Employment. Maybe you're going to find me work, work in a restaurant. Yeah, sometimes I'm a help out in a Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace. Well, fine. I can get you a job in dozens of coffee pots. Coffee pots? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. You know what a coffee pot is, don't oh, you? Oh, sure. That's the pot where you make the coffee in. But how am I going to work in a one? <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Now, you take this note down to Joan's hash house and see if you can... Hey, waiter, how long do I have to sit at this table for my order? I asked for two fried eggs on toast. Pasco, did you call his order into the kitchen? Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Jones. I'm a holler the... I'm a holler the two fried eggs on a toast... Well, how do you expect the chef to understand you? It's Adam and Eve on a raft! <laughs> then he knows I'm a one or two fried eggs and a toast. That's right. Maybe he's a writer, but he's not the English. That's restaurant lingo, Basco. I thought you said you had experience. Hey, waiter, how about some spare ribs? I like to shoot a shoot. Well, want to order the spare ribs? No, no. What do you think the chef is, anyway? A magician? How will he know if you want spare ribs if you just say spare ribs? You think would it be better if I'm a just to say lamb chops? <laughs> oh, brother, if you want spare ribs, you holler, a stack of bones! <laughs> now he knows what you're talking about. Oh, what is it? Is it all so simple? Sure, just listen to me. You'll get it, I hope. Some coffee, bub. Draw one! Draw one. Uh, no cream, make it dark. Pull down the shades! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vasco, what you doing? I'm a pulling down the shades of like a <laughs> Stop, stop. I was just trying... Hey, where's my eggs? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is Adam and Eva in a life of On a raft. <laughs> <laughs> where's my coffee and my spare eggs? Hurry, yeah, to pull it down to the curtain as it coming up a life of butter with Adam and Eva's a stack of a bone. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Schultz. Well, 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 if it ain't Pasquale, the answer to a meatball's prayer. 
place, Schultz. I'm no one argue with you. My heart is a heavy. That's not the only thing. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves the way you threw out Luigi. Schultz, since that day, I'm no can sleep. I'm no enjoy at a thing. I'm a terrible shame of myself. You believe me, don't you, Schultz? Sure, like Maisie believes Gimbel's. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, Schultz, I'm a swear, pinky to the sky. I would do anything to get that boy back. Well, it's too late now, Basquale. Luigi has got it a job, and he's very happy. Don't say that, Schultz. I'm not going to stand. Luigi should be happy. I'm, I mean, without me. Where is he? I ain't talking. All right. Serves me right to my heart. I should have break in a teeny weeny pieces. In a teeny weeny weeny pieces. In a teeny weeny weeny teeny weeny pieces. No, please, you're dirtying up my floor with the pieces. <laughs> Before I'm a ghost, Schultz, I'm asking you like a dying man. It's no use. As far as I'm concerned, Luigi is happy. At Jones Hash House on 384 6th Street, and you should never bother him again between 7 and 5 when he works there. <laughs> Thank you, Schultz. <laughs> Stack of wheat cakes. Uh, sure. Stack of wheat. So what's the order, bud? Uh, a couple of eggs. How do you want them? Prime them both sides. Let's uh, have a two and a flop them over easy. What's the <laughs> use of pal? Uh, give me a hamburger with onion on it. Grind the dog and a pin of rose on him. <laughs> 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 uh, boy, Vasco, you really caught on quick. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jones. Yo, take those extra tables, kid. The joint's getting crowded. All right, sure, sure. Hey, where is it, the stack of wheat, sir? Hey, hey, Luigi. Hello. Huh? Sorry, bud, this ain't to my table. <laughs> Luigi, look, it's me, Pasquale. Sorry, you must have been taken of another waiter. Hey, can I have a ham sandwich to go out? What do you want, the girly? A ham sandwich to go out. Dress a one a pig to go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to you? You don't even talk English anymore. Look, bud, look, I'm only got a two hands. You better get another waiter. Luigi, don't look at me like that. This is a Pasquale, your countryman, a fellow who's brought you to America. Coffee, please. Draw one. What's that, Pasco? One a cup of mud. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, I know I was wrong, and when I'm going to do something wrong, I'm the first one to admit it. Okay, girlie, this little piggy is ready to go. Well, where's the coffee? Hey, Effiche, where's the coffee cake? <laughs> Louis, maybe you don't want to look on me no more, but I'm going to bring somebody else with me. Please, Luigi, let me call her in, just to stay here. Rosa! 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 <laughs> yes, my little pigeon. Rosa, look on a Luigi. Tell him what you would want the most of all. Most of all? Yes, and tell him what you need to make you happy. Six lamb chops and lots of potatoes. <laughs> oh, shut up your face. <laughs> Luigi, please listen. How's about that beef sandwich? Beef sandwich? One a cow between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, please. Look about I'm a tolly. I'm only got a two hands and this ain't to my table. Come, Rosa, it's no use. Watch it, Basco. That's a fourth dish you broke today. Well, I'm a, I'm a sorry, Mr. Jones. Hey, where is my milk? I'm a sorry. Squeeze the Adam and Eve. I mean, a squeeze the cow on the left. I mean... Basco! Take off that apron. What? You fouled everything up around here. I never saw such a change in a man. You picked up everything in no time, and just as soon as that, you forgot everything. Yeah, but please, 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 Mr. Jones, my mind is That's not... it. Your mind is not, period. Since that guy and the fat dame left, you haven't been the same. You're fired. Fired? Yeah. Oh, no. No, please, Mr. Jones, you can't fire me. I'm going to no place to go. Now that I'm a Mr. Pasquale... I was acting terribly to him. 
is and ever going to send me no money. I, I don't care. Pack up your things and go. You're fired. Through. Finished. Oh. Hello? Hello. Is uh, Mr. Basco there? Uh, yes. Just a minute. Here, Basco, for you. Me? Hello, this is me. Uh, Mr. Basco, uh, we never do anything like this, but it seems another party wants you very badly. If your other boss consents, would you go to work in another restaurant? Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Where is it? Uh, 25 North Halstead Street. 20, 25 North Halstead Street? I'm on a 21 North Halstead Street. That's the next door to my antique shop. Hey, that's a special... Yeah, that's a special... It's a, his a spaghetti palace, Pasquale spaghetti palace. That's right. He's offering you ten dollars more a week. Ten? All right, to make it a twenty. Huh? huh? Who's that? Please, Luigi, don't hang up. I give you twenty-six weeks off during the summer, thirteen off during the winter, six weeks of pension, a double time for holidays, and triple the time when you don't feel tired. Luigi, say yes and make me happy. Oh, Pasquale, yes, yes, yes. For you, I'm a worker for nothing. Luigi, you just made me the happiest man in the world. <laughs> You're coming home, Luigi. Sure, Pasquale. Welcome, my son. Hello, Papa. <laughs> So, Mamma Mia, everything is a work out of fine. I'm back in my antique shop, and I'm also helping out the Pasquale and his daughter. But a funny thing is happening, Mamma Mia. I'm, I'm a miss or something. I'm a no feel right. I'm, I'm a don't know what it is, but it's something that is a gone out of my life, and, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a no feel right. What's the idea, you stupid green horn of booby? You ain't got the brains of a jackass. Why I brought you from the older country, I'll never no, know. No, wait, stop, stop, Pasquale. Wait, I'm gonna finish this letter. Mamma mia, I'm gonna feel very happy now. I'm gonna find out what I'm gonna miss in life. Yeah, was, was a Pasquale's innocent. He's my good friend. And now, now, Mamma mia, I'm home again. Your loving son, Luigi Basco. A little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint is just about the perfect taste treat to enjoy between your meals. During the morning or afternoon, when you get a little hankering for something tasty, slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum into your mouth. Chew on it and get the full enjoyment of the pleasant chewing and the refreshing, delicious, real mint flavor. That little stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum will satisfy you without spoiling your appetite for lunch or supper. Try it, won't you? Keep some Wrigley's Spearmint Gum handy to enjoy between your meals. Friends, so that the members of the Life with Luigi cast may enjoy a well-earned vacation, this program will be off the air for the next eight weeks. However, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this same time when they will bring you from Hollywood the romantic adventure show, Romance. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash has starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. And so, folks, until we're back on the air eight weeks from now with Life with Luigi, this is Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.